So let us begin. If you look at the front page of um, the screen I'm sharing, uh, it says project monitoring and controlling. Let us throw our mind back to the beginning of this project management discussion. Uh, we talk about the framework. And of course, in the framework, we're able to talk about initiation, planning of the projects, So oh, sorry if you can hear me. I think uh, my internet went off. Uh, I am trying to be back. Let me see. Uh, okay. So let's let's just make progress. I think the internet will come back. It jumps to the new Wi-Fi as soon as um, it went off. So recall what we have been discussing so far uh, when it comes to project management. We have been able to look at the framework, and um, during the framework, we're able to um, see the five life cycle involved when it comes to uh, our project management. And um, we talk about the initiation, we discuss about the planning, and on Saturday, we look at the 10 processes involved when it comes to executing our project. And of course, this evening, um, we're going to be looking at monitoring and controlling and of course, closing of our project. The goal of um, this class is to uh, enable us um, get to a point where the calculation for monitoring and control can do it. It's telling me that I should check my, I should check my audio. So um, let me come back to you guys and confirm if you can hear me. Um, Cecilia, please kindly unmute your mic and confirm that you can hear me. I can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. So today we'll be looking at monitoring and controlling and of course, closing of uh, our project. So when we say monitor your projects as it is being executed, it means tracking your project as it is being executed and providing control. Control mechanism in the sense that as soon as you begin to see what is not part of your project, uh, things are not going the way you plan, then you begin to think of strategies you can put in place to ensure that um, your your project see aligns with the main objective of the project. Now, if you look at your screen, when the project is being executed by routine, is for us to monitor and control the project. What does it entails? To monitor your project, what does it, what does it entails? If you look at your screen, there are two words you are seeing there, monitoring and controlling. Now, I just want to separate them before I go into details. To monitor means checking to be certain that the team members are following the plan. To monitor means checking to be certain that the team members are following the plan. Situation where the team members are deviating from the plan, that is when we begin to think of control strategy to make sure that my objective of that project is still met. A simple example will be, the plan says that um, a certain activity should last for seven days. They are on the sixth day and I observe that what we have done compared to what is left undone, it will take additional three or four days to finish up. That is their sixth day on that project. Ideally, by the plan, we are supposed to finish tomorrow, which is the seventh day. But as things stand, tomorrow is not going to is not going to work. It's not looking visible. 
How did I get to know that tomorrow will not work? You can use the chat box. How did I get to know that tomorrow will not work? Tomorrow we will not finish. They gave us seven days to carry out this certain activity. We are on the sixth day. And on the sixth day, we have seen, we have said to ourselves, ah, tomorrow this work will not go finish. How did we know that we will not finish tomorrow? Please use the chat box. It's just a simple word. Use the chat box. It is because I was doing what? Just use the chat box. It's just a simple word. How I got to know that I will not finish on the uh, tomorrow, which is being the seventh day. Please use the chat box. Let me get your answers. I've not seen any response from anyone. Okay, yes, Yeti has dropped an answer. Yes, I just need um, about five answers and then I will move on. Yes. Just one comment, just one comment in the chat box. We're about 18 of us. Just, it's just one comment. It's just one comment. Uh, let's use the chat box, please, so that we'll know that we're together. Let's use the chat box. Maybe I should be calling names. Uh, let me be calling names. Maybe that will help. If I call names, maybe that will help. How did I know we, we had a certain activity to be carried out and they gave us seven days to carry it out. Today is the sixth day. And I have said to myself and to my team members that hmm, this work will not go finish tomorrow. How did I know that we will not finish that work tomorrow, which is the seventh day? How did I know? That's just a simple question. How did I know that we will not finish on the seventh day? How did I know? Just for me to be sure that the 18 of us that are here or the 17 of us that are here are following by checking the program of work and then check the work done. Okay. So what's the simple word for this? Checking the program of work done and um, checking the program of work and of course checking the program uh, the, the work done. What's the simple word for that? Yes, what's the simple word for that? It's just a simple word. It's just a simple word. How did I know? How did I know that I will not finish tomorrow? How did I know? We have spent six days on the certain activity that they gave us. Uh, okay, you cannot hear me. Okay. 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 I've gotten, let me, let me reconnect this and see. Okay. That um, somebody saying that you cannot hear me. Uh, somebody is saying that they cannot hear me. Um, let me just confirm again. Um, okay, I'm I'm getting answers now. Okay, I'm getting answers. Uh, okay, let me call someone to confirm. Um, yes, Docas Ivan. Docas Evans, please can you unmute your mic and confirm if I am very audible? Docas Evans. Okay. All right. Likita, Likita, sir, uh, please confirm if you can hear me. You can unmute your mic to confirm if you can hear me. Okay. Okay, since uh, they can't hear me, but I can see my mic moving. Okay, can just someone, anyone can just unmute and then. And, uh, I can hear you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, who else? Yeah, someone else can just unmute and also confirm. Atairu, uh, Aliu. Ataru Ali, you can hear me? Okay. Uh, success, also okay. confirm if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you, sir. Thank you. All Good right. evening. 
Yeah, like I can the, uh, the mm -hmm. okay, that's fine. So uh, let's put our mics um all muted, then let's make progress. So the question is we had seven days to carry out an activity, and on the sixth day, I discovered that we will not finish the activity the next day. How did I know? Work in progress is the concept. Okay. Uh monitoring the progress of work um, of the project work. Okay, uh, by monitoring, okay. The answer is through monitoring, okay. By monitoring the project, okay. Uh, Lucius Messi, I believe you can hear me now. Uh, you check the schedule of work by checking the program of work and then check the work done, okay. All right, all of these answers are correct, but the simple word for it is through monitoring. The only reason why I got to know that I will not finish on the seventh day Okay, am I not sharing my screen? I think my screen is being shared. Yes, my screen is being shared. My screen is shared. So I think you just want to check your device again. Um, the error is not from me, uh, possibly from your own end. So you may just want to check. Um, Ali, please just check. I think I'm sharing the screen. It's showing here that I'm sharing the screen. So it is true monitoring. That is how we discover that we will not finish on the seventh day. Now, now that you have discovered that you're not finished tomorrow, the seventh day, um, you now have this information. What do you need to do with this information? What can you do with this information? What do you do now that you have discovered that tomorrow you will not finish? That you have gotten that information that tomorrow is not visible, you will not finish that activity. There are really no formulas for control. There are really no formulas for control. Control simply means a strategy you bring in place to make sure that your objective is still achieved. What is my objective at this point? I want to finish this activity on the seventh day. Let's even say the activity is a critical activity, meaning that you cannot delay it. It must have, it, it, it just has to finish on the seventh day. What can I do to make sure that these objectives are achieved? That now becomes your control mechanism. So what control can we adopt as a team members? There are really, there are many options for us so that we can finish the work on the seventh day. Uh, remember, control is just a function of what we can afford. You may want to pen down that. Control is just a function of what we can afford. Now, when I say afford, what we what we know in terms of, um, as a team, what we can afford, can we afford to extend this activity by four more days? If it is a critical activity, certainly we cannot. What, what are the other options available for us? Let me increase the number of workers, number of people working on that activity. Okay, there are just two of them or there are just three of them working on that activity. If I increase the number from today being the sixth day and tomorrow from two to maybe four or five person, making them six, that will now increase and it will now give them a huge delivery. Now, I want to ask us, is that a control strategy by increasing workers? Is it a control st strategy? Please just use the chat box and say, no, it is not a control strategy. Or yes, that yes, that's a very good control strategy. So use the chat box. Is that a control strategy? I have discovered that we will not finish on the seventh day. And I've been working with just two or three persons on that activity. Then I decided to increase the numbers. Maybe I add additional two or three persons or four persons. Now I'm asking you, is that a control strategy? Use the chat box. Is that a control strategy? If I increase the number, is that a control strategy? Just one comment so far. Okay, yes, if it doesn't affect the, the budget. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, that's fine. Yes, it is, yes. Okay. Okay, just two comments. I'm not seeing most of you comments. Uh, just to be sure, I, I, are all of us in this in this class? Okay, 
So it is a control strategy. It is a control strategy. I can increase the number of people working so that I can speed up the work. That's control. So this is what we do when project execution is ongoing. So it is a control strategy. So there are di different things you need to monitor when your project is ongoing. There are parameters you need to monitor. It is when you monitor these parameters uh, and you have the information about them, the information you get from monitoring those parameters, that's where you can tell whether your project is on track or not. Uh, permit me to use the medical terms. Uh, we can say the project is healthy if it is on track. For example, when you go to the hospital, you are not feeling so good. The doctor will first do, will first have some information, what we call vital signs. They want to know your temperature. They want to know your blood pressure. They want to check your weight. They want to check your height. All of those things, you understand? They just want to check. Probably check your, your, your blood and, of course, take it to the lab and do some testing. That is, that is them checking to be sure of what is really wrong with you. At the same time, um, if all of us, some of us who are in the engineering world, um, when you are driving your car and all of a sudden you begin to hear some noise, the first thing you want to do is park that car and try to find out where the noise is. I have sat in, um, in the driver's um, um, passenger seat so many times and the driver will tell me, there is one noise that is coming from my engine. For me, I don't hear the noise. I just feel it's normal noise that comes with car. But of course, the owner of the car already knows how his car sounds. So he will be telling you, you know, the noise is coming from somewhere. That is him monitoring. Um, he's very cool to be sure of what um, is wrong. So that can also be referred to as monitoring of um, project in terms of engineering. So it is the same thing in your project. As your project is ongoing, there are vital signs you need to look out for. You can, that you can use to know whether your project is on track or not. And like I said earlier, control is a function of what you can afford. Control is a function of what we can afford. And I will tell you for a fact, over the years, we have applied control mechanism in our various lives, in our families, you know, in us particular, in relationship, and so on. I just want to cast our mind back to the Ebola crisis we had some time ago, the epidemic. What was your control strategy to that Ebola outbreak? Yes, you must have heard some people saying they were baiting with salt, some were drinking salt, some refused to shake hands with people. Of course, those are control strategies to them, especially to those people that drank salt and was using salt water to bait. That is what they feel could be the control strategy for them to, not to contract the Ebola virus. And again, I ask us, what about the COVID-19 pandemic? What was the control strategy we put in place? A lot of us began to use hand sanitizer. I was in a friend's house, I think yesterday or so, and immediately he said, so no, 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 take this hand sanitizer, use it to, to, to clean your hand a bit. Don't want to contract any virus. You understand? Those are control strategies. Some some stops shaking hands with persons. Uh, some 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 stop hugging. Some stop um, sharing some other items. So those are control strategies that we can put in place that we have been putting in place um, knowingly or knowingly. And I still ask us. Early this year, there was a cash um, a cash redesign which affected almost every one of us. What were the control strategies you put in place? I bet you, if you have a thousand era or two thousand era, those two thousand era can stay in your house, can can stay in your hand for for another two weeks, because whatever you want to do, when you go to the store or the supermarket, the, the first thing you want to do is, ah, when they collect POS, a fee transfer, those are the first question you ask, because the cash that you have in hand, you just want to protect it, just because of an uh, emergency. So those are control mechanisms, those are control strategies that we have all been putting in place knowingly and unknowingly. And what about the recent um, um, increase in pump price of fuel? Every one of us now have become um, a, 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 a statistician, a statistics person. When you want to move from point A to point B, you begin to calculate the amount of money you have in your pocket. 
you begin to analyze. And when the vehicle man pass, you say, okay, you are going so, so, so direction. How much is it? If it does not tally with your arrangement, you say, no, Organa, this amount I won't pay. So those are some of the strategies we have been putting in place as control. Those are some of the strategies, knowingly or knowingly, that we have been putting in place. I know some of us may think right now that I'm sounding emotional. Yes, this is because I have seen things further under the sun, that the swift does not always win the race, that the mighty ones don't always win the battle. The wise does not always have the food. The intelligent ones does not always have the riches. Nor the knowledgeable ones always have success. Why? This is as a result of time and unforeseen events. Unexpected event has overtaken them all. For some of us, life is ahead of us. So many of us are, are chasing after, after it. So that's how it is. That's how you provide control strategies in your various aspects of life that you see yourself. Now let's dust that off. Let's continue with our monitoring and controlling class. Now, if you look at your screen, uh, when you look at your screen, these are the parameters we use in monitoring and controlling our projects. Um, these are the parameters we use. Uh, let me just call on someone um, for them to just mention the, um, the uh, processes involved when it comes to monitoring and controlling our project. Uh, let me see. Let me see with you. Okay, success. Can you unmute your mic and mention the um, parameters you are seeing on your screen? <clears throat> mention the um, 11 or the 12 of them. Okay, so uh, I'm seeing um, monitor and control project work, perform integrated change control, control scope, control um, cost. Control quality. Am I actually on? I hope we are on the same page, sir. Yes. Go on, go on. Okay. Control resources, monitor communications, monitor risks, control procurement, monitor scale and stakeholder engagement and validate scope. Thank you very Let much. Let me tell you. Thank you very much, success. Yes, you mean control sir. schedule. Uh, okay. But that's fine. Yes, that's fine. Thank you very much for that. So yes, if you sir. pay attention, uh, pay attention to number one, there are two actions where it's there, which is talking about assignment, it's the assignment itself. And the second one is describing what I should do when I observe changes. What you want to find out when you are monitoring is, are my team members deviating from the plan compared to the execution? When I look at what I plan and compare it with what the result I am getting, I am generating. Is there any form of variance, which is called change? Variance is change. What do we do with that change? How do I accommodate that change? Such change, um, um, how do I accommodate that change into the project? So that is what we now call perform integrated change control. So the first one there, you just want to monitor and, and, and see if what is in your plan is what your team members are carrying out. And when you now discover that there is change, then the next thing for you to do is for you to perform integrated change control. So what are the vital signs you watch out for in your project as it is ongoing? You control scope, you, you control schedule, you control quality, resources. If you observe, we didn't say control communication. Look at your screen. We didn't say control communication. You can only monitor it to be sure that the information you are sending out is actually getting across to the stakeholders that needs it. You can only monitor risk. You cannot just wake up one day and say, okay, uh -huh. all the people in this Zoom, all of them, they are risk. Oh, Jacinta is a risk. Uh, Abim is a risk. BC is a risk. Cecilia is a risk. Um, Chris is a risk. No. You only need to monitor them. It is when you monitor them that you now begin to observe one or two things about them. Then you begin to say to yourself, you know, this person at the fair round, let's say Karim, he brought in bag, one black bag, he kept it in the front and he has gone to the back to go and sit down. I hope it is not what I'm thinking. So it is when you observe all of those movements, that's when you begin to see um, any, any person that drops such a bag as, as risk. 
So in your project, you begin to monitor, you begin to observe to see if there is any risks happening or they're about to happen. So the next thing you want to do is for you to begin to implement your control strategies, your control responses that you think you have planned and you begin to apply them. You can control vendor because you are the one that engaged them. That's procurement. You can control procurement. You can tell them, hey, this is where you will be. This is where you will be. This is when you will resume. This is when you close. You understand? So you can tell them what to do because, of course, you sublet part of your work to them for them to do for you. Okay, somebody's mic is coming up. Somebody's mic is coming up. Uh, Princess. Princess Akai, please just um, uh, be in charge of your device. Remember, this class is being recorded. You will need it um, as some time progresses. So we have sublet some part of your work to um, the third party people. So you control them, you tell them when to resume, when to close and all of that. Uh, and of course, you cannot control stakeholders' feelings. That's engagement. I have my feelings, you have your feelings. I cannot tell you when to cry. You cannot tell me when to cry. And I used to wonder our parents those days. They will spank us. Wow. They will inflict pain on the child. And they will say, keep quiet. Don't cry. How does it work? You inflicted a pain on a child and you are saying you should not cry. How now? How is it going to work now? You will see even when the child tries to obey the parents, you will see him jerking with his hand on his mouth. By the time he opens the mouth, he will just he will shout aloud. So those are part of the con um, 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 why you cannot um, control stakeholders' feelings, stakeholders' engagement. Because the whole thing about stakeholders' engagement is about dealing with issues. And as they are originating um, from, from the stakeholders, you begin to deal with them. And of course, when the project result is achieved, you invite the sponsor to come and confirm what you have done. I know whether you are okay. Uh, if he says you are okay with the project, and of course, that's what we now call validate scope. In construction industry, we call it um, inspection. Just a moment. All right. So those are the 12 processes involved when it comes to monitoring and controlling um, our projects. Now let's begin to take them one after the other. Monitor and control project work. So what, what are the things that you look out for when you are monitoring and controlling your project work? What are the areas that needs concern? Um, if you look at A, A is telling us that um, as you are monitoring and controlling your project, that's actually where, where you begin to compare what your team is doing with what you have in the plan, which is what we call performance. You compare performance in execution with the plan. Then secondly, um, you periodically assess your work to know whether there are areas where there are some changes that need to be made. Whether you want to make some of these changes, it could be preventive changes, it could be corrective changes, as the case may be, remember we talked about it in uh, execution. So the point is periodic evaluation or assessing of our performance, whether we need to adjust is very important. That's why from time to time, you need to check your budget. You may, you may see that uh, maybe in your budget or in your expenditure, you begin to see, say to yourself, ah, team members, we don't spend plenty for this project to we have spent so much. What is the next thing we need to do? We don't have freedom to spend much more anymore. I think we should cut down on some costs. So you begin to look where you can cut down some of these costs. So let's even say every weekend you used to give a, you used to give your team members maybe transportation allowance. Now that you have seen that you have spent so much, the next thing you want to do is, is for you to cut down all of those costs. And of course, you also want to check, you want to do evaluation with some of these parameters so as to know whether you are on track with time. Are you on track with money? Those are very important aspects um, of your monitoring and controlling um, um, stage. 
And of course, C is telling us that you check your risk. Are there more risks coming up other than the one that you have identified, the one you have anticipated to know whether they are coming up? And again, the response strategies that you have put in place, that's the time it becomes effective. You begin to deploy those strategies. And D is telling us that during controlling, you need to maintain an information based about your project result. So you keep constant information, and these are the information that you need to communicate from time to time to your stakeholders. And of course, D, D is telling us, or rather, yes, I think I, I just explained D. Uh, e is telling us that um, you, 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 you report progress. Your progress of work should be intact. And that report can also help you to forecast. Monitoring and controlling is also the period uh, you need to forecast. You need to see how things are going on in your project and you can, you can predict and say, okay, we didn't complete this activity yesterday. We didn't complete social activity yesterday. Uh, we didn't complete social activity last week. If we keep working in this manner, we need additional two weeks or three weeks for us to finish off our work. That's forecasting. That's you being proactive. That's you looking ahead. That's you comparing what you have done uh, compared to what is in the plan. The time you have spent on the project so far compared to when you are, are going to deliver the project. Then F is telling us that when we are monitoring, you are able to see the reality. And of course, you forecast. You see the reality on ground and you begin to forecast about, about it. In monitoring, changes are happening and you are requesting for it and they are approving it and you are implementing those approved changes. You can also provide appropriate reports, that's page now, provide appropriate reports about the progress of the project to stakeholders so that they know how things are going on in the project. And in, of course, I is explaining that in monitoring, you are making sure that the project is not deviating from the original business objective. So these are the purpose. These are the motivation why the project was initiated in the first place. So monitoring will help us to make sure that um, the project still aligns with the business goal uh, or objective of that project. So how do we monitor our projects? That's the first thing that should come to mind. So uh, what do we need to do now? Uh, what do we need to do to monitor our projects? Okay, somebody's mic is coming up. Uh, okay, let me check the chat box if there is any. Um, okay, there is no complaint. Please just feel free to use the chat box just in case uh, you you have a question or perhaps you have um, some, some ob observations. So let's make progress. So how do you monitor our projects, or what do I need to monitor in my projects? If you look at your screen, I need number one, project management plan. That's number one. Then I need number three. That's work performance information. So I basically need my information about how my team is working. That's performance. So number one and number three you are seeing on your screen are the two major inputs because I simply want to compare the plan with what we are doing. So the others you are just seeing there, they are just additional information. But these two, that's number one and number three, are what you basically need for you to be able to monitor your project. So now how do I go about it? What do I need to do? How do I go about it? Tools and techniques, like, like, like I explained on Saturday, tools and techniques, these are the things we are going to use um, to monitor our projects. If you look at your screen once more, you will see number one there is, is our friend has appeared again, expert judgment. Yes. So expert judgment. Of course, analysis is what we are going to use. Monitoring is all about analyzing what is going on. Then you are drawing conclusion on what you are seeing on the project, whether it is well or not. So, so many te techniques. In data analysis, some of us are already taking data analysis class. 
We have the alternative analysis. We have um, cost benefit analysis. We have variance, we have trend, we have end value, we have root cause analysis. Uh, variance analysis is simply when you want to find out what you plan and what you did. You just want to find out what you plan and what you did. What you plan and what you did. You want to find out the difference. In the plan, what we plan is to spend two days in a certain activity, but we have spent four days. What's the variance in terms of duration? Use the chat box. What's the variance in terms of duration? I need answers. We plan to spend two days on a certain activity. We spent four days on that activity. What's the variance? What's the variance? Use the chat box. Okay, two days variance, okay. Yes, Cynthia is saying two days variance, okay. What's the variance? Two days, okay. I'm saying two, variance is two days, okay. Okay. Okay, some of us who are mathematicians, when we give you two days for you to carry out an activity and you spend four days, uh, what is the variance? Some of us are mathematicians, so I'm seeing two days, two days, yes, yes, yes. More comments? It should be two days, okay? Two days, okay. I need more comments. More comments? They gave us two days to carry out a certain activity. We spent four days carrying out the activity. What's the variance? What's the variance? I've been missing two days. Two days. Okay, two days. And he was also saying two days. Okay. All right, I've got I think I've gotten a lot of answers. Two days, two days, two days. All right. So we gave you two days to carry out an activity, but you spent four days carrying out carrying out that activity. What is the variance? Permit me to say. For some of us who are gurus in mathematics, you will agree with me when I say the answer is minus two days. Would you agree with me if I say the answer is minus two days? Still use the chat box. Would you agree with me if I say the answer is minus two days? Okay, Cynthia is saying, yes, I would agree that it is minus two days. Who else is agreeing to that? Will you agree if I say it is minus two days? Just one person? Is it just one person? Okay, I've been saying yes, I agree. Uh, if you don't agree, still put it in the chat box. How? I don't agree. How did you come about minus two days? Put it in the chat box. I don't agree with you, sir. You are wrong. Put it in the chat box. Okay. Wow. Use the chat box. Okay. Let's do this, Radas. Uh -huh. I don't know how you got minus two. Okay. Fair enough. I don't know how you got minus two. Okay. Don't know how you can you explain why it is minus two? All right. Okay. Okay. So let me now explain. Um, Likita, uh, success. So uh, I gave you guys two million era that you should carry out an activity for me. Yes, when I gave you that two million, this time around, I'm switching from duration, I'm switching to cost now. I gave you two million, carry out this activity for me. Two million will carry out that activity. From all the calculation we have done, two million is okay for that work. But success, you went ahead, Nikita, you also went ahead and you spent four million on that activity. Now, 
What we had was two million that we gave you. So where did you see the extra two million naira that you used for that project? Now let's assume you take the money from your pocket. When you take the money from your pocket, what happens to your account? If you take the, the two million from your account, what happens to your account? Will your account read plus two million or minus two million? Yes. Will your account read plus two million or minus two million? Minus two million, okay. Yes, two million debts, yes. Definitely minus, yes. Minus two million, yes. Very correct. So now, Likita, success. I gave you guys two days, carry out an activity. You spent four days. Have you shot above your schedule? Yes. You have spent extra two solid days that I didn't give to you. So it's already reading negative. And you are behind schedule. It is two days. So the extra two days, where did you get it from? Definitely not from me. So you have picked that two days extra from other activity for you to finish the activity. And that's how we got minus two days. Now, is anyone confused about how we got minus two days? Is anyone confused how we got minus two? Anyone? Okay, if you agree that it is minus two, just use the chat box and type G to G. That is good to go so that we can make progress. Good to go. G to G. Okay, Jacinta is saying I'm confused. Okay. All right, Jacinta. You had 150,000 era, and you said you are going to the market. You want to go and buy some food items. And as soon as you enter the market, okay. And as soon as you enter the market, Jacinta, you saw this wig. Ha! Huh? This wig, don't they enter your eyes? Since you had a budget of 450,000 for you to stock up the home, for you to buy food and put in the house. But as you enter that market, when you see that we born, you see that born street, you say, lie, lie, I will not let it go. I don't know how much they send born street, but instead of you to use the money and buy food items, you now decided to say, okay, born street, they say is 150K. You now said, fine, you will deposit 100,000. You will come and pay the remaining 50,000 and you collect the born street. You now went into the market and bought things worth of 50,000 naira. Now, Jacinta, let me ask you. You had a budget of 150,000 for you to buy food items into your house. Would the 50,000 be able to buy you the quantity of what 150,000 naira would have been able to buy you? Would that have happened? If you have carried 100,000 to go and buy Bond Street, would that happen? Is it I'm waiting for your response? Okay, you will not be able to buy the food items, not so. So now assume that um, it is very, very important that you buy those items, those food items. Then you now spoke to one of your friends. Maybe you, you place a call to Mary. Mary, Alpha now, I beg. Borrow me 100K. Make I use buy some food store. When Mary gives you 100,000, you are in debt already. Or perhaps let's change the scenario this other way. You went to the, 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 the shop where they sell the bond straight and you deposited the 100K, telling them that you will come and pay the remaining 50,000. They now link your account to their account. As soon as money comes into your account, it is being debited. Success. Mary now sent you 50,000 that you should use and do something else for her. As soon as that money enter your account, what do you think will happen? What do you think will happen? Jacinta. What do you think will happen to your account? It will be deducted. Very well. So if it is deducted, is it, a, is it minus or positive for you? 
Is that a minus or a plus? It's a minus. So it means you shot above what we gave you to spend. So the extra you are spending, you are putting yourself in debt. That's what it means. So I gave you two days to carry out an activity. At the end of the day, you spent four days. So you see, you have overshot the time I gave you. So that's why the reason for that answer is minus two. So because if you say two days, two days is plus. You know, there's an, an invisible plus in front of every figure. Yes. All right. So it means you gain if that's the case. If that is the case, if it is plus two days, it means you gain. It means you are ahead of schedule. What about when it comes to costs? We can also do trend analysis. Um, trend analysis last week, we we're supposed to finish 20 activity. This week, we we're supposed to finish five activity. Um, this time, we we're supposed to finish 12 activity, but we did not. If you follow the trend here, you will see that you, are, you will fall behind schedule. You understand? And of course, we also have root cost analysis. It's the method we use to trace back where errors are coming from. Remember the Shikawa diagram I showed you guys on Saturday? That Shikawa diagram helps you to, to recall where errors are coming from. It could be from the, from the management, it could be from the material, it could be from the label that those errors are coming from. You understand? So you just want to trace back and find out where errors are coming from. And of course, you begin to put your control strategy. Now, in a case, where you are beginning to trace back where errors are coming from. These are the places errors may be coming from. Like I said, it may be coming from the management, it may be coming from the material, it may be coming from the labor. All of these things you are doing, you're just trying to trace back to find out where um, um, errors are coming from. And I tell you, some of us also do this knowingly or knowingly. Yeah. Have you ever lost an item? Have you lost an item? Then you begin to think, ah, ah. And this is my wristwatch. I'll be wearing a rich here now. Now here I'll be pull up. Mm, I, the last time I used it was, uh -huh. now here it's supposed to be. What are you doing? You're trying to trace back. You're trying to record the scenario in your, in your head. So the same thing happens in our um, analysis, um, 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 root cause analysis, trying to find out where errors may be coming from in our projects. There's also what we call end, end value analysis. And that is the one we are going to be focusing on. End value analysis. End value analysis makes life easier for me because it gives me parameters to work with. Parameters like cost performance index, schedule performance index, plan value, actual per, uh, percent complete, plan percent complete. We also have cost benefit analysis which is, um, of course, all of us are quite familiar with. Now that um, the economy is not too friendly, we just want to look for alternative to things we are buying. I earlier saw some time ago um, on Instagram, what happened? A lady, was, a lady was mocking another person who went to buy Titus, but because he could not afford Titus, he now bought Festus. How many of us remember that video? So that's also an example of cost-benefit analysis. You just want to find out which one that will work for you. You understand? So anyone that is not among all of these analysis we have mentioned is what we refer to as alternative analysis. Yes. Anyone you are not seeing here among these, all of these analysis is what we refer to as alternative analysis. The bottom line is when you monitor your project, you analyze. Please keep this in your mind. When you monitor your project, you analyze. You analyze data, and the data will tell you where you are. Remember in your data analysis class, all you have been doing is working with data. So please keep this in mind because I will ask, what do you do when you find yourself in this situation? The simple answer will be for you to analyze. And once you carry out your data analysis, what follows? The next thing that follows is decision-making. That's number three, decision-making you're seeing on your screen. That's decision-making. So you have analyzed, you have seen how things are. Maybe you are behind schedule. What decision do you need to make? What do I do at this point? So in monitoring and controlling of your projects, only you cannot um, 
monitor, you can involve your team, you can say, hey guys, we need to know how things are going on in our project. So, in monitoring of your project, it can be done in meetings. Maybe you want to use a meeting as platform every Monday, or maybe every Tuesday we have meeting, we, we review what we have done so far. Last week, this is what we did. This week, this is what we project to do. So these are the tools and techniques we use when it comes to monitor and control project work. Then of course, what will be the result? When you monitor and control your project, the basic thing you have is report on how work is going, which is performance. When you monitor and control your project, you may see areas to which changes um, your plans are happening, and therefore you need to raise those change requests. Uh, whenever you just see areas in your project, the right thing for you to do is make a change request. It is very important. If you recall, you can always make changes on your project without really disturbing the sponsor. As long as it does not affect these three areas, cost implication, extend the delivery date, and of course, additional work, additional specification, or maybe scope, as we may put it. You understand? Then you can make decision. Once it does not concern these three areas, you can go ahead and make decision. But in as long as it concerns the date you are going to deliver your project, it concerns that you are going to be having an you are going to be you'll be requesting for additional costs and you are going to be adding another additional work to, to the work um, and that is on the on the project plan you need to speak to the sponsor but if it does not concern these three areas you can go ahead and make changes in your project so it is not every change you just go on knocking on the um, project and um, and the sponsor of the project and saying hey, hey okay give me this give me no so once you make change requests, whether it is approved or not, you need to update some relevant documents. Remember, we also discussed it on Saturday. Whether the change you have um, you have asked for, whether it is approved or not, you need to update some relevant documents. Maybe you request for an extension of two weeks. An extension of two weeks is what you requested for. Now, your project plan was reading that um, uh, the project will last for four weeks. Now it is no longer correct. It is no longer four weeks. You have now added two additional weeks, so that is making it six weeks. So six weeks is the actual um, um, schedule duration that should not be on your project. So you know you need to go back and then uh, update it. You understand? So that way, every time you make change in your in your in your in your project. Your project management plan is always updated to reflect the new changes you have made. So that way, um, any change you, you you make, whether it is approved or not, you are always have um, an updated document that speaks about it. Perform integrated change control. You asked me to make an item for you, an example, bottle water. And you say you want the color to be blue. That's the specification that you gave me at the beginning of the project. So as I kept working, some things changed in the market. And we need more money in order for us to get what we need to have come up with what you want based on the specification you gave us. We now wrote to you as a sponsor about requesting for additional money for us to be able to deliver according to specification. But you called us on phone and say, there is no additional money I'm going to be adding anywhere. There's no money anywhere. She, she, I no get. Nobody say, you know what really give me the money. But true, true, you don't have the money to give me on that project. At this point, there is no money. We may not be able to deliver this blue cover of that bottle water that was written in the specification. The money we have can only achieve black. I will now wrote back to you and say, okay, oh, this one you did not, you said you are not going to add additional money. Um, well, the money we have at hand can achieve black. Should we go ahead and use black as the cover for our bottle water? And he said, yes, go ahead and use black. Now, you need to pay attention to this. 
If he says, okay, go ahead. Notice this. He didn't approve your change for more money. Now, because of that non-approval, it has affected one or two areas of your project. Point made. Anytime you make a change request and they turn it down, you must also identify the implication of that disapproval. And it has to be brought to the limelight of everyone for them to know what the implication is. Are we okay with this? You need to let everybody know. Now, imagine we are to make bottled water. And if we want to draw a concept from making bottled water, we just want to look at something that is related to water itself. When you look at the sea, what do you see? You kind of see sky blue and all of that. When you look at the sky, so the water has um, um, some kind of relationship. So if we use blue cover for our bottled water, it sends signal that we, 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 we had a concept. But you are not saying we should go and use black. When a customer sees a bottle water with black cover, I want to even ask some of us here, when you see a bottle water, it has black cover. What's the first thing that will come to your mind? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? The first thing that comes to your mind is, ah, black cover, okay. Like in my village, people don't find, don't find me rich here, true, true. You want to avoid buying such. You just want to look for the one that can give you an insight that, okay, you are, you are, you are drinking, water or you are buying bottle of water you understand so it's just a normal con conceptual idea it is about perception the psychological states now you begin to explain hmm, if we take this bottle water to the market with black cover we may not make sales the way we will have made sales with blue cover that way you have been able to specify the implication of the non-approval of the money and of course the approval of what the money could afford. So now I ask you, how do you really go make changes? What do you need to do for you to make changes? I hear people say, when I see a change, I just go ahead and implement the change. I will talk to the sponsor later about it. Well, it is not always the best. It is very important that before you make changes, you speak to the sponsor. I'll give you an example. Back in 2018, we we're constructing um, a project, um, uh, a shopping mall, Life Camp, um, Bellevue Phase 2. Uh, the scope of work on that uh, project was for us to actually um, erect the structure, um, just the civil work per se. Now, the plot that was mapped out for that um, um, shopping mall is a waterlogged area. And therefore, for us to achieve a solid foundation, route foundation was used. So the depth was about 2.6 meters to the oversized concrete. So what was, what was in the drawing was actually 1.8 meters, uh, being that, um, that that project was actually one of our biggest and uh, first projects. We try to avoid scenarios when we go home at night to sleep and we begin to imagine if, if the building has collapsed or not. You understand? So we, we, we wanted to avoid, avoid that. And of course, we wanted to give um, a very good quality job. Uh, what now happened? Long story cut short. Um, what is in the drawing is 1.8 meter. But of course, we went ahead and um, we have a depth of 2.6 meter. Then instead of us of, of spending um, um, two million that was given, that was approved for that foundation, we ended up spending 3.2 million. When we went to the sponsor and asked the sponsor for additional money, <laughs> the guy no grew. Yes, my boss was with him for like three hours, begging him. See, I've spent additional 1.2 million. You need to give me the money. The guy said, lie, lie. I am not adding additional money. Even the QS was there. He was even aware of what we have done. But for where the guy said, Lila, lie, lie, I am not, I am not, I'm not adding additional money. But at the end of the day, what did he give us? He just gave us additional 500,000 naira, Simply because, well, we did a good job, but at the same time, we had a loss of 700,000 naira. 
So it is not really wise for you to go ahead and make changes without informing the sponsor. So now there are due processes that you need to follow when you want to make changes. There are due processes you need to follow when you want to make changes. One, step one, if you are there, you can write. Step one. Step one, you need to observe the change. You need to observe the change first. That's step one. When we say observe change, this does not indicate that it's only you that will be observing the change. The change can be coming from the project manager, it can be coming from the team members, can be coming from the stakeholders, can be coming from um, um, even you yourself, the sponsor. You understand? Number two is you must officially request for the change to be made. You must officially write official document. That's step two. Official document. That's step two. You must officially write what we now call change request. It is simply a memo you send to the sponsor. Um, you, you send it describing the changes you observe in the as work is ongoing, and you are seeking approval for the sponsor to go ahead and then effect those changes. Then step three. Step three. Most especially when it involves money, the sponsor will pretend as if he does not understand what you are saying. And then um, he, he may just want you, he may just want to see you face to face in person. Uh -huh. What do you be the talk? You say you need additional five million era, additional five million era for what? Is it for, you understand? Now you will not have to go and meet him. When you meet him, you now begin to explain, okay, well, this is the reason why I need additional 5 million. So the process, that is the third step now, is meeting. You need to meet with the sponsor. You will meet with the sponsor. That's, that's step three. Then in big organization, uh, big project, for example, Let's say um, we have a project connecting um, a railway track from Nigeria to Ghana. Such a project is a big project. That project belongs to the federal government. Now, in that case, Mr. President will not always be available. He may just assign one or two, three, four steering committees. Uh, steering committee here is spelled S-T-E-E-R-O-I-N-G, steering. Steering committee, which may probably involve people like um, the minister of FCT and all. You understand? Or minister of works. So those guys may just be the steering committee. So they will be the ones to attend to you, maybe when you make changes, when you are requesting for additional money and all of that. So you need to just write to them. So they will be the one to attend to you because Mr. President will not always be available. You understand? So they will they will form you will form one or two or two three um, steering committees, and uh, those three steering committees will now be the one to attend to you. So the committee uh, will make up of um, the 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 huge um, the huge um, implementation of your changes you are making. You understand? They will invite you here. Come here, Nikita. Come, come, come. You tell us say you need additional five million. Come and tell us. So such a meeting is what we call control. Um, Change control board meeting. Okay, my voice was breaking. Okay, let me see my network. Okay, let me connect back to this one. All right, so, um, so I said step one. Step one, you need to observe the change. Step two, you must officially write for the change to be made. Step three, um, it involves meeting with the stakeholder or the sponsor. Then I said, um, in some big organization, there, there is uh, always a um, um, steering committee to attend to you as the project manager. Uh, big, a big um, project like connecting um, railway track from Nigeria to Ghana is a big project. And that's a federal government job. Mr. President is the sponsor of that project. Mr. President will not always have your time, so he will form one or two steering committee, which I mentioned that the Minister of Works may be there, the Minister of FCT may also be involved. There may be up to six or seven of them steering committee, and it is those steering committee that will now begin to approve some of these changes for you. Uh, it is this steering committee that you will appear before, 
and for you to defend any um, change request you are making. And we say such a meeting is what we call change control board meeting. So in that change control board meeting, you just justify the change request you are making. You understand? Then step four, approval is not verbal. Approval is written. So they must write to you and say, okay, yes, we have approved. Go ahead and implement the change. The steering committee or the sponsor will write, okay, we don't approve them. We are go implement them. You understand? So approval is not verbal, it is written down. So that when lit litigation comes tomorrow, you have document to tender as exhibits. Then number five will now be for you to now implement the changes. Now that it has been approved, then go ahead and implement it now. You understand? So, so those are the five steps involved when it comes to making changes. Yes, change control board meeting, yes. Yes. So those are the five, step in, uh, five steps involved when it comes to uh, making changes in your project. So like I said earlier, it is just a due process you follow to make sure that the, um, that change um, are, pro uh, are properly handled in your projects. Now let's make progress. Now, if you look at um, your screen, perform integrated change control input, input remains the same. And of course the tools and techniques also remains the same. What will be the output? The output still remains the same. What are we going to be doing? The next one is for us to control scope. Control scope, what does it mean? Put your eyes on ground. Put your eyes on ground to be sure that your team members are not deviating from the work they are supposed to do. It is very possible that some of your team members may digress to something else that is not part of their project work. It is very possible. Can resources be abused? Yes. What will be the implication? If team members are doing work that is beside the work they are supposed to do, what will be the implication? The implication will tell on the time of the project. Your delivery date is going to be obvious. It's going to delay the day you are going to deliver your project. It is also going to tell on your budget because it's not part of your project scope. So if you begin to do work, we no concern you. We, where the money come? Where the time come from? So it will affect. So you need to do what? Control scope. I'll give you an example. We have done plastering in, in our condominium blocks in um, Bellevue phase three. We have done plastering internal and external. Then the AC people now came and they begin to break the wall. They break the wall, they install their pipes, and they left it like that. And they asked us with the, the contractors to go back and plaster it. And we say, no, it is not part of our work. It's not part of our school. It is not for us to break, for, for us to have plaster, then come back to the plaster. So they should have installed the pipe before we plaster. So in the case where they don't install the pipe before plaster, we'll go ahead and do our plastering. Whoever breaks it, we we'll do what? We'll be the one to plaster it back. So that is a good way for you to control scope. If we now go back and start plastering it, that is double work. That's not part of our work. You understand? And it will tell on our budget because we use additional time, we use additional material. You understand? So you need to control scope. What else can we control? What else can we control? You need to control your schedule. So there's something we are going to be doing. Uh, we are going to control schedule and control costs together. We are going to control schedule and control costs together. Now, let me show you how, because this one, um, we'll use parameters to do it. We are going to be working together. Um, we'll take about two or three case scenario, and then um, we'll see how we use those parameters. I will try as much as possible to make sure that um, um, it is simple because like I said on Saturday, it involves some little calculations. So at this point, I will need you to pay attention because I will need to introduce you into the, um, the, the calculation. Then of course, I will leave you with it. Then we'll meet next time, we'll conclude with it via Zoom. Now, 
For some of us that don't like mathematics, I have good news for you. Me, self, no like mathematics. So as I don't know, I saw you self, no, no. But then I want you to use the chat box. Let me see those that are my brothers and sisters that don't know how, that don't like mathematics. Just use the chat box. Uh -huh. I've seen Likita. Likita is saying he's my, he's my brother in the Lord of not knowing mathematics. Don't be shy, yo. Come and say your mind now. Because for whoever does not drop comments about this mathematics, what will happen is they will be the one to help us with the calculation. They will be the one to help us with this calculation. Okay, Cynthia is saying I like it more. Uh, okay, we have to see it here, actually. The other one is actually covering her eyes and saying, I don't know. I don't like mass. Okay, Chikoli is also saying, I don't like mass. Me too, I don't like mass. Sandra, I know Sabio, but I've been the person for school. <laughs> I don't like mass. So, how deep is the mass? Okay, Samuel Ogoma is asking, how deep is the mass? I like the simple ones, but the hard ones, no, 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 no. Okay, so who else has not made comments? Let me call them out. Okay, I think Chris. Chris is very good in mathematics. Jacinta is good in mathematics. Uh, Better Olamide, Olam, uh, Oladimeji is a mathematician guru. I like the easy one, Abby is saying. Cecilia is very good in mathematics, so she said. Uh, um, Emily is saying, uh, no, uh, uh. I had I A's all my exam while in school. Uh, Walikat is saying, yes, as I be mass now, I mean they, I mean they shut down. Ali is saying, yes, I'm a, I'm a mathematician. I'm a guru when it comes to math. Mary is also saying, yes, I know how to calculate. Bring it on. I will do it. Princess is also saying, yes, I can do math. Um, success is also saying, oh, yes, I teach mathematics in higher institution. Then Yeti is also saying yes. In fact, sometimes I tell the lecturer to leave the class, I will teach the students. So these are the people that will be helping us with our mathematics today. Because I didn't see their comment on the chat box saying that they don't like mathematics. So it leaves me with no option than they are our mathematician gurus. Mathem uh, mathematics and my mate, okay, finally, Mercy has come out to come and debunk the story I mentioned before. Okay, I like this one. I don't want stress. Well, let me give you a short story about myself when it comes to mathematics. Yes, we agree that mathematics should be done in class. Yes, that's correct. But the truth is, if you really want um, us to finish up on time, we really need to start from here. It is not that difficult. When we make progress, you will see it. But meanwhile, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this about mathematics. If you don't know it, it is simple. I also did not know it. In fact, when I was in the higher institution, the first call I had in mathematics was two over 20. Test one, I had two over 20. Test two, I also had another two over 20. That's how many? That's 40. And that's four over, four over 40. Is that a path to failure? Yes. I was already going to fail. There is no, uh -huh. there is no going back. Four over 40. Then my school is a kind that even fe your fellow students will they threaten you, they tell you, they, are, they will chase you away from this school. They will withdraw you. You will be withdrawn. And true, true. Once you don't meet up with the criteria, you will be out of the school. Then there was fear in me. So what did I do? Expert judgment has been one of the things we usually do. I went to my seniors and I asked them. I studied architecture. I don't really have time to practice this mathematics. So I went to my senior, how far? How on a piece drop? Then my senior said, look, carry that your test one, carry your test two, and do what? practice them. That is what will come out in the exam. I don't know if that happens in your school, but that's what they told me. And what happened? I carried my test one and test two. I took it to somebody that knows how to solve mathematics very well. The guy solved it for me. 
And I begin to practice and practice and practice and practice. And I practice to the point where I begin to teach other persons. Then when the exam comes, I will see the test question and I will write. Now, it happens for like two semesters. From my four over 40, I will still manage to get my honorable C. So I did not fail. So that was the strategy I was using. Not until we got to maybe 200 level or 300 level or so. Then the lecturers now begin to change the, the question from test question. Wherever those lecturers are today, those ones that start, started changing those questions, may God forgive them. Because when I now go to the exam hall, I will see different questions from the one I practice. And it's really cause for worry. What happened? It is a case of, of you're about to fail. You're about, you're about entering it. Now, this is one thing I also did. I kept a group of friends that I know that they know mathematics very well. Um, I always have this social kind of person. I'm a social kind of person that gathers people around. I attract people. So they always look out for me whenever there's mass exam, there's mass test. No, I don't even drag the test with them. My normal four over 40 is a regular. I leave it for the lecturers. So when there's time for test, I know they really bother. If I score one, it's fine. If I score two, it's okay. And I, I, I've told myself the test is for them. But you see the exam, I must drop something. Something must happen. So my friends always look out for me whenever we enter exam hall. Have you ever met some of these bad invigilators that you have set formation already where you want to copy from? And before you know, they begin to split you. You that you are in um, Lagos, they'll carry you to Abuja. You that you are in Abuja, they'll carry you to Lagos. That's how they split. May God forgive them. And that's how it was. So whenever I now enter the exam hall and they split us like that, the next thing that happened is, my friends, they want to look out for me. When they look out for me, they'll say, ah, they now they look at the question paper. When they look at the question paper, they say, ah, um, uh, the test question, who did this exam paper? How so low we do today? When they look back, they'll see that I'm writing. They'll say, hey, what they write? What did they write? My brothers, I was writing what I practice. There was no need for you to leave your answer booklet blank because that's the main idea. The, the, the easier way to, for you to fail is for you to leave your answer booklet blank saying you don't know. In my own case, I have studied something and I wrote it down. Guess what? I did not fail. I still had my honorable C. It's a strategy. I had my honorable C. So when we come out of the exam, my friends will say, hey, what do you write for you? I say, ah, hmm. Me, I don't follow, I don't follow the answer that exam question. I write my own. And I didn't fail. So it was a strategy other people were now adopting as time progresses. Yes. Okay, the, the strategy worked for Cynthia too. He said the strategy worked for her. Uh, I think in a in her Igbo and French classes. Yes. That was the strategy I adopted. And I was using it to until something now happened. Hmm. Final semester before we graduate, you know that if you have any carryover, you will come back and repeat. It is an extra year. It's no going back. I remember that mathematics, it is numerical series. Like I said before, my friends usually come to my place. We gather, we solve the math together. Yes, the same scenario, everything played out. I was well prepared. When I now got to, to the exam hall, the man has changed one figure in the test question. You don't come out to, you don't put five. He has changed some of these figures. And I said to myself, well, it is still something that I can do. Let me still try it. Let me attempt. Now, I think it's six unit course. So I have about four to five questions to answer. Then question number one has like um, 
um, children, grandchildren, and so on. Then I decided to pick question number one A. I was in question number one A for 30 minutes. And I am to answer five questions. And that was my last mathematics in that school. For 30 minutes, I was struggling with question number one A. I look at my right, the person that is there is writing. The person has finished number one said. I look at my left, the same thing. I look back, the same thing. I look front, the same thing. Now only me. Now, the person that was sitting close to me is not as if he's my enemy or no. The person was a lady. It's not a pride per se, but I cannot copy from a woman. Now, falling hand now. I couldn't have copied from a lady. Now, nobody said she no go allow me to copy you, but I just felt no. I shouldn't have copied from her. So what happened? Now that I discovered that I am actually on my way to carry over, to, to, to repeat, to, to come back and do carry over for that course. The next thing, I don't know where I got the guts. I just called the invigilator and said to the invigilator, Oga, this is my final MTH. I cannot afford to pay. You see that boy that is sitting there? His name is Izuchuku. Izu is his name. He knows how to solve this mass. Please bring him for me. Take this person that is here. Take him there. The man burst into laughter. The man was shocked. The man was surprised. What is going on? He laughed. He went front and came back. When he came back, now I said, okay. Who is the guy? I called him. The guy came, and of course, you know, if you don't know mass, you also still good say you shall be copy. Because you cannot know mass and still at the same time, you can you don't know how to copy it. So immediately Izu came, I asked him, Izu, how many questions have you solved? Izu was already in question number three. How many paper, how many pages do you use to solve question number one and two? He count it for me. Now so myself count and follow him. I count it and follow him as Izu started question number three. As he was writing, so I was writing. I wrote to oh, at least I've answered like three questions. And I say, okay, I am out of the zone of failure. Then I now begin to go back to copy the remaining ones that I have left behind. Now, this is what happened before the exam got to that point. When we were, first of all, when we assembled in that hall, one guy, the dean of um, our department, may God forgive him. In his own case, you need to say double amen. Because the guy just came and said, no, final year student, how can they be this clumsy? Half of you go to the next class. I tell you, half of those people that went to that class that time, majority of them went back to school to rewrite that exam. It is as bad as that. Now, that single act that I did in my hall, that they brought somebody for me, then I copy. Every other people were now demanding for same privilege. And in that hall, none of us, none of us failed. What is the point? Why am I emphasizing on this story? No matter how bad you feel that you don't know mathematics, the rest are sure that it is just a process and you can always pass it. It is not a do or die. So for the small one that you have, for the small knowledge that you have, it can be used for you to, for you to do this calculation. This calculation we're about to do is not a difficult one. It is something we can do online. It is something we can do online. So that's the moral of the story. So just keep an open mind. Feel free when you don't understand. Yes. Feel free when you don't understand. Just say it and tell me, look, Oga, I didn't understand this. So the goal is, I will introduce you to the parameters today. Then when we meet next time, we will now start solving the case one by one. Let me introduce you to the parameter. So how do we know if we are maintaining schedule? How do we know whether we are maintaining our estimates? How much we have spent in terms of money? How do we know that? Because if you check, this is usually a very important aspect 
of our projects. How are you dealing with time? How are you dealing with budgets? Now let's 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 look at the parameters. These are the parameters we are going to be using. These are the parameters we are going to be using. Remember, I said we are going to be controlling schedule and control cost together. So let me take you to the parameters. These are the parameters I just want to explain. And once we explain the, these parameters, you will go ahead and take case one on your own. Yes. Now, if you look at your screen, we have the end value management analysis, EMV, end management, end value management analysis. The first one you are seeing there on the header is name, formula, what it says, why you should use it. Please write this down. Write this down. Whenever you are solving this math, whenever you are calculating for this end value management analysis, and you check this table, and the formula you are supposed to use is not there, what you need to do is for you to analyze, write it down. That when there is no formula, I need to do what? Analyze. I'm giving you time to write that down. When there is no formula, I need to do what? Analyze. When there is no formula, I need to analyze. Now, let's make progress. We're taking the first one now, BAC. What does BAC mean? BAC means budget at completion. Budget at completion. It means the total amount of money that you will have spent by the time the project ends. Budget at completion. The total money we would not spend though when this project ends. Budget at completion. Budget at completion. Now, please use the chat box if you don't understand what budget at completion is. Please use the chat box. Use the chat box. Use the chat box. Does anyone here that does not understand what BAC means? Who understand what BAC means? Who understand it? If you understand what BAC means, just say yes, G to G. G to G. I'm waiting for comments. BAC. I'm waiting for comments. What does BAC mean? I just explained it. Jacinta. Abim, Ochifia, Cynthia, Gladness, um, Cecilia, yes, okay, uh, Emily, um, Nikita, Lucius, I'm on the fence, okay, uh, Princess, Samuel, Sandra, it's only Yeti that has given me an answer. What does BAC mean? I just explain it. Let me, let me take that again. BAC means budget at completion. Budget at completion. It means the total amount of money you will have spent at the end of the project. Thank you very much, Aliu. Thank you very much, Aliu, for that. Now, is there anyone that does not understand what BAC means? Is there anyone that does not understand what BAC means? Budget at completion. Is there anyone that does not understand what BAC means? Okay, I understand now. The actual cost of project against each forecast, okay? So budget at completion simply means 
the total of the total amount of money we will have spent at the end of the project. That's what budget at completion means. BAC. Budget at completion. That's what it means. The total amount of money we will have spent at the end of the project. Please. I want to explain this table before we finish. Simple reason, it will help us in, in, in uh, it will help you, help me on how we can calculate for case one, case two, and case three. If I, next, if I explain it, it will not be easy for you to take it, for you to do the calculation. So you need to really pay attention here now. Is there anyone that doesn't understand what BAC means? I will take my time to explain it. So BSC means the total amount of money we will have spent at the end of the project. Now, the next one is plan value. Plan value. What does plan value mean? It means the value you plan, the amount of work you anticipated to have finished in spending a certain amount of money. Plan value. PV, plan value. It means the value you plan, the amount of work you anticipate to have finished in terms of spending, uh, when you spend a certain amount of money. Now, when you hear value, when you, hear, you can write it down. When you hear value, when you hear value, we are referring to money. When you hear value, we are talking about money. That is currency. That's what it means. When you hear value, we are talking about money. So plan value is, we plan to spend social amount of money. That's what it means. Are we together, guys? Are we together? Hello? Yes, are we together? Just use the chat box. Are we together? Okay. All right. Hello? Hello? Yes, gladness, your mic was coming up. Your mic was coming up. Okay. Plan value, what does it mean? It means the value you plan, the amount of work you anticipate to have finished in spending a certain amount of money. So I can make comment like, um, in two weeks time, we will deliver a value of our work, it will be worth two million naira on this project. What that means is that in two weeks time, I will have spent two million out of the budget doing exactly the amount of work two million should have done. That is, you gave me two million naira. By the time you come and look at the work I've done, you will equate it as two million naira. You will say, okay, it is worth two million naira. It's just like when you send somebody to the market, you gave the person five thousand naira to buy you meat, and you gave the person that money, and as he's coming back from afar, there is an expectation of five thousand naira meat that you are expecting to see, and you see the person from far, the lead away in carry the thing no heavy at all, it's just dangling. The, the letter is just dangling. When the person now brings it to you and gives you, he says, ah, now 5,000 naira meat with this. It's small now. Why did you say it is small? It is because you have an expectation. You have a value in mind. Your 5,000 naira, the amount of meat you should have got, got you. You understand? So the, that's plan. 
So these days in Nigeria, when you go to the market, you carry your whole plenty money and go to the market, you come back. Uh, when you put down all the things you have bought, you now begin to search your pocket. Ah, ah, see, I lost money. Ne? Why? It is simply because you have an idea of how much that you had in your pocket should get for you. So when we say plan value, it is the amount of work you anticipate to have achieved in spending a certain amount of money. Is there anyone that does not understand what plan value is? Just use the chat box. If you don't understand what plan value is, use the chat box. Is there anyone that does not understand what plan value is? Anyone that does not understand what plan value is? Okay, if you understand what plan value is, just say G to G. Use the chat box, G to G. G to G. I don't understand. Do... Okay, success. I think you left and came back in. Um, okay. All right. Uh, all right. So I have two people who are saying they don't understand what plan value is. So this is what I'm saying. Uh, success, you gave me 5,000 naira for me to buy meat for you. As I came back, uh, I brought you the meat. The question you asked me was, ah, ah, is this 5,000 naira meat? Why are you asking that question? You are asking that question because you have an expectation of the amount uh, of the of of the quantity of meat you are supposed to get for five thousand, you have an expectation. So that expectation, the meat I gave you, does not meet the expectation that you had in mind. Why are you able to ask me that question? Why did you choose to ask that question? It's because you have already had a planned value for that for five thousand. The meat that should come from it. So that's why we now said. Plan value means the amount of work you anticipate to have finished in spending a certain amount of money. The amount of meat you're supposed to get when you spend 5,000 naira. Then I can buy 5,000 naira meat and come to you and say, ah, this is the 5,000 naira meat. You say, eh, hey, be this. Okay, eh, you did okay. That meat I brought for you met your expectation. That's the plan you had. So in project, we're not saying plan value means that this is the work we're supposed to have finished spending a certain amount of money. So I gave you two million naira that in two weeks, you should have delivered a project, a, 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 an activity or part of the work that is worth that two million naira that I gave to you. That is, whenever, when I give you two million, what you should be delivering should be exactly what the amount two million that I gave you. Now, success and and Abo, do you guys understand what plan value is now? Just use the chat box. Do you understand what plan value is now? Yes, yes, yes. Abu, I'm waiting for you. Do you understand what plan value is now? Just one comment. Do you understand what plan value is now? Okay, that's fine. Yes, that's fine. So now let's move to the next one. End value. End value. End value is the opposite of what you plan. Plan is just a projection. The opposite of what you plan is what you achieve. E.g., for example, I came to you and I say, how far? And I, you say to me, as we speak right now, we have been able to deliver value worth 2.5 million. Meaning, maybe I gave you 2.5 million Naira for you to carry out a certain activity and you deliver the amount it worth. What you deliver is exactly that 2.5 million Naira. Put it this way, 
a simple way for you to put it, a simple example. When you enter an organization, they told you that, look, this is the number of people we expect you to bring into the organization at the end of the year. If you uh, at the end of the month, if you bring hundred people, we pay you hundred thousand. Yes, if you bring hundred people, we pay you hundred thousand. That is plan. That is a projection. That's what you plan for. Then when you came, you say, okay, I will make hundred k as long as I bring. 50 persons. But at the end of the month, you only brought 70 persons. Please, how much will you earn? Use the chat box. They tell you, say, okay, well, if you come, if you bring 100 people at the end of the month, we'll pay you 100,000. But as time progresses, at the end of the month, you only brought 70 people. How much will you be paid? Use the chat box. How much will you be paid? Yes, yes. How much will you be paid? Just two people? How much will you be paid? 70%, yes. That's also correct. 70K, 70K, 70K. Thank you very much. I believe you are following. Now, why are you being paid 70K? Now, this was the projection. Okay, come again, sir. So you got an employment, Yeti, you got an employment in an organization and they told you that at the end of the month, they'll pay you 100,000 as long as you bring 100 people. That's projection. That's what you plan for. That's the plan. Bring 100 person. I collect 100 key. But when month end, now only 70 people you bring. How much will you earn? 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 Okay, Yeti is saying 70K. Success, I'm waiting for your answer. How much will you earn? So you got an employment in an organization and they say at the end of the month, we'll pay you 100,000 as long as you bring 100 people. At the end of the month, you only brought 70 people. How much have you earned? How much will you earn at the end of the month? How much will you earn? Thank you very much, Yeti. Thank you very much, um, 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 Kachi and Jacinta, and of course, Cynthia and Chikama. Thank you very much for your answers. Yes, 70K. Now I ask you, what is your end value? What is your end value? Yes, so now what is your end value? What is your end value? What is your end value? The 70K that you wrote there is now your end value. That's the actual thing you achieved. Remember, the 100K was just a projection. The 70K is the actual thing you earn. So, it could be that I gave you two million naira, but the work you did is 2.5 million. Yes, it's possible. Very possible. So your end value is the actual thing you eventually earn at the end of the day. End, as the name implies, end value. And remember we said, when you hear value, we are rating it in terms of money. End value. That's what it means. What you actually earn. Now, is there anyone here that does not understand what end value is? I want to believe everyone of us understand what end value is. Okay, my network is unstable, so sorry about that. Then the next one is actual costs. Very simple, actual costs. How much did I just spend for this project so far? Mm -hmm. Actual costs. It means the amount that have gone into the project at that particular time they are asking you. That's what we call actual cost. How much have we spent on this project so far? Actual cost. I believe every one of us understand what actual cost is. 
If you know what actual cost is, please use the chat box and say yes, G to G. Please use the chat box and say G to G. I understand what actual cost is, G to G. Yes, in the next 10 minutes, we should be rounding up. G to G, I understand what actual cost is. Please use the chat box. Yes, I understand. Mary, yes. Use the chat box. G to G, good to go. Good to go, good to go, good to go. I need more good to go. I need more good to go. Actual cost. I need more good to go. Okay. Okay. Better. Allah the Meji is saying he doesn't understand. Okay, this recording will be made available um 30 minutes after this class so that you can go through for some of us who had um terrible network. I'll publish it. This very recording, I'll publish it tonight. So let's make progress. We have seen what actual cost is. Then what is, the next one is SPI and SV. I'm taking both of them together, SPI and SV. Both of them are parameters we use to know whether we are ahead of schedule, we are on schedule or behind schedule. Those are the, those are the three possible positions we could be. It's either we are ahead of schedule, we are behind schedule or on schedule. Ahead of schedule means we plan three days to do this certain, to do a certain activity, but we did it in two days. Ahead of schedule means we plan three days to do a certain activity, but we spent just two days to carry out that activity. On schedule means now, three days we plan to do this activity, and at that three days we did one. That's you being on schedule. They gave you three days to carry out an activity, and you use three days to carry out that activity. Now, behind schedule means activity where you suppose use three days, they finish. You use five days, they finish out. That's behind schedule. How do you know your position? These parameters will help you. SPI and SV. It will help you to know where you are. Then I want to pick the next two together again. CPI or CV. CPI or CV helps you to know how you are doing in terms of your budget, in terms of your expenditure. So it can be that you are within budget, you are below budget or you are ahead of budget. Those are the three possible positions. So CPI or CV helps you to know how you are doing in terms of your expenditure. And the three possible positions is that you can either be within the budget, below budget, or ahead of budget. Below budget means you are running that project below the amount. Originally, we plan to spend $20,000. But at the end of the day, you spend or you did the work for just $15,000 or $18,000. If that happens, we say you are running below budget. That's what it means. Are we together? Yes, I believe so. We are together. So, your CPI or your CV helps you to know how you are doing in terms of budget. So the next one you are seeing there is also cost variance, which is what we'll be looking at next uh, when we take our case one. So for some of us who are still there, I will quickly um, download these recordings. And of course, I would, um, I would share it. I'll publish it on um, on um, on the group as soon as um, this class is over. I will do that immediately. So please, I will give you the recordings. You have to go through this end value management analysis table. Understand what I've said. Then you try and take case one. 
you will try and take case one. That's an assignment. You just try and take case one. When we meet, we will now start the case one again. So it is very important that you take the case one because I wouldn't want to waste time on it. Yes, I wouldn't want to waste time on it. So thank you very much, every one of us who have stayed in. Um, um, let me quickly say thank you very much, Jacinta. Your network was a bit um, dangling. Abim, um, Adora Cynthia, a Gladness, Bethel Oladimeji, Cecilia, a Chim, uh, Chikama, a Chris, Kachi, Namido Aliu, Lakita, uh, Likita, uh, Mary, Mary Jane, uh, Princess Akai, Sandra Osunde, Success, Yeti, thank you very much. Um, right about now, I will publish the, the, the recording for today's class. Please, the end value management analysis is very important. You need to look at it. So right now, I will not be available this Saturday. I will not be available this Saturday for your class. And that is why I would want us to finish this, our calculation online. It makes it easy. It makes it easy. The videos, the recordings will always be available for you to revisit. And again, you are going to be having an assignment after the next class. There will be an assignment and that assignment will help to shape your understanding about end value management analysis. So next week, Tuesday, God's willing, uh, it will be communicated either on Tuesday because you need to start your customer service management this weekend. And as a result of that, there is no time for me to have a class because I'm also not available. So I will want us, I will plead with all of us that let us take this our end value management analysis class online. But in a case where we don't understand it, it is very easy. You can still walk up to me and I will explain it. But, uh, but of course, the recordings will be available for you to look at, for you to take your time and understand it. But it is not difficult. By the time you take case one, you begin to see that it is not difficult. So the take-home assignment is for you to go and understand the end value management analysis by revisiting this video of, of, of um, this class. Then you try to take case one. Then when I come, we'll look at case one together take case two, then case three will be an assignment for every one of us. So thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in to this class. Uh, okay. Uh, Chikama is asking a question. Sorry to bother you um, on HRM assessments. I have a question on HRM assessments. Okay, feel free to send me a message on WhatsApp. Yes, please send me a message on WhatsApp. I am available to attend to you. So thank you very much, everyone. I will publish the video right away. Thank you so much. And um, have enjoy the rest of the hours of your holiday.